Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nisho here. And about two weeks ago, I made an Ashen video sort of going over the deck, giving you guys a basic rundown of how the deck works, how it plays and what its issues were and some alternative builds as to how you could personalize the deck to play how you would like to play it because it's very much like loose engine. It's not really a full deck yet. There, there isn't enough support, a full Ashen deck. I think you do have to mix it with like a little something just to keep it going. And so the biggest problem with Ashen going into testing for me was the fact that like the Vados board wipe was just too much of a setback for the deck to play around. The fact that you set all that up just to blow up your own board and kind of get very little for it was very underwhelming, I think, as a strategy for me. I've read some of the comments. I have this fellow here, uh, Mr. Tobias O'Higgins, right, where he says that you shouldn't be playing Priestess or King you should just play hero field spell and vados and i'm just scratching my head like how would that even work like aren't you gonna brick like crazy off of opening field spell because like it doesn't really work unless you have both like you need both the field spell and the vados or both the field spell and the hero um any of them field spell and hero isn't even that good right so like what's the point of even playing the deck if you're not gonna run like the full amount of support because it just seems like it's going to be Brick City opening Field Spell or opening Hero, which it, it kind of already is some some somewhat of a bricky deck. But you can mitigate that by playing a lot of level four extenders, going into things like Banshee to make sure that you have searchers that can give you access to the Ashen engine. And I think not playing King, I think I'm kind of OK with because King it's, it's just not as strong because we don't really have that many options. But not playing Priestess is crazy. You're not going to play the card that gives you half of your potential engine. I, I mean, it's like half of the necessary cards you need to start your combo. I don't know. That just doesn't sound like a good idea. So I want to take some of your guys' advice about Banshee, Armadic Seed, SP, and see what kind of build I can use to take advantage of all those factors. I've come to a build like this where this is basically the engine, like the non-engine would be called by Onward, but this is this would be the engine for the deck. And uh, the super heavy package is the easiest way to make a rank four. You could play something like Bonfire in the deck to, you know, give you more access to Priestess. Ultimately, it, you can't just open Biker Wakashi to make the full thing work. You need to open access to rank four plus Priestess or plus Field Spell or Vados plus Bike. Like, you just need, like, basically any one of these cards. Like, uh, either Priestess, Field Spell, or Vados. You need access to at least one of the three plus uh, Biker Wakashi which isn't too hard. Or, you know, you, you can just open Awakening of Vados by itself and it does everything. But then if you open Super Heavy later on, it, it's it's weaker, but at least you got the Ashen side of the deck started. This is how we're gonna start the combo. We're gonna go Bike Effect. We're basically gonna do the Super Heavy side first. Bring the Owakashi. I'm gonna get Big Benkei. Big Benkei is gonna get Gaia Booster. Gaia Booster is gonna equip. Go into our Banshee. And then Banshee here is going to search Vados. Because we used a super heavy way, we're not locked into anything. We also don't have any spawn traps in our grave. I, I don't know. In case you want to continue this combo going into turn two or three, if you draw another super heavy, you're not going to be terribly off. Okay, so we normal priestess here to search the um, Obsidime at Ashen City. And then we get to go Vados. Vados pop. Vados summon. And we start our little boss battle here. Uh, our field spell is going to trigger because it was destroyed. Summon King. King gets to summon out Hero. And then Hero gets to pop. Now, let me let me just say that King is not a staple. But clearly, getting the extra body when starting your turn is so much better than just like not having it. Just in general. So we're going to turn our... Banshee and our Priestess into SP Little Knight. Even if our opponent has nothing in Graveyard, we can banish our own Banshee. And then Banshee can trigger because we control another um, Pyro monster and it was banished. It actually gets to summon itself back and that's really important, right? So to the guy who says don't play <laughs> King or Priestess, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Like this is this is this is kind of cooking. Like I, I don't think I can take your advice. 
So we get to overlay Banshee into Exceed Armor Fortress, and Fortress gets to search out the uh, Trap Guard. Then we get to Link 3 into Promethean Princess, and I'm sure you guys can figure out where this is going from here. Um, Princess can summon back our fire monster, the only <laughs> fire monster in our graveyard, by the way, which is our Banshee, right? Third time Banshee has come up. And then we're going to go into Pit Knight early using the Banshee and the hero, right? We don't really need hero on field because we have field spell. Like we're, we're going to recycle Vados, pop field spell, summon hero anyway. We don't need to keep hero on field, right? There's no point of having access to two heroes especially since we're planning to board wipe, so it's better that we use it as material anyway. Now, Pit Knight early is actually really interesting. This actually makes up for the whole board wipe thing because we're going to have a card like Amblo Whale where when it's destroyed, it gets to revive Link 3 or lower monsters from my graveyard, which if you're not under Princess, right, if, if you're not uh, destroying it to summon Princess, that gives you a lot of options to either summon back SP, to summon out Pit Knight, and then if you summon out Pit Knight, you still have a fire monster that you can pop to summon out Princess. And the cool thing about Pit Knight is that if it's destroyed by a card effect, it comes back during the end phase. So now we actually get some recursion, some sense of follow-up for blowing up our own field. We, we kind of start to get rewarded for blowing up our own field. And the cool thing is that we're not really, because we're not using Amblo Whale, like, off-rip, off if, like we summon back princess and it comes back to our turn we can revive amblo whale and then if amblo whale gets popped again we can possibly even revive sp little knight we're starting to take advantage of the fact that our field is being blown up in a way that like makes the deck more formidable more interesting as well right um our only spell in grave which is the field spell is going to get shuffled back because of our field spell so we will have access to super heavy engine again next turn and we have full armored exceed here to go into our dark lancer and we also have ashen for eternity to bring back uh vado so you can do these during draw phase down by phase and any time before your opponent actually gets to play a card so now let's say they have their own combo right so when you're using vado so you want to wait until they get to around two monsters before they can sp little knight and that's when you want to do something like Full Armored Exceed, right? So Full Armored Exceed uh, gets to Quick Effect Banish because it's a trap card. It's Speed Spell to Banish and Equip an Exceed Monster with another Exceed Monster from your graveyard, which would be our Banshee onto our Dark Knight Lancer. Dark Knight Lancer then has the effect to non-target swallow a monster my opponent controls, attach it as material, which is really cool because now it's like, okay, that puts them back on one monster. And it also does something else really interesting, which will come up in a bit. So let's say they have a third monster to summon, right? Now, I was supposed to do this after Priestess was summoned, but I accidentally clicked no, so I had to do another action with the opponent's deck before I could trigger Vados, or before I could activate Vados here. So just pretend that this hero isn't here. They, they only have two monsters, right? You get to summon Vados to their side of the field, and then you can Obsidime summon out your, your uh, hero and hero frame one you know fast effect can pop the vados and the reason why you want to do it this way is so that um they don't have the ability to make something like an sp or to access their full engine before their monsters get wiped right you want to get rid of as much as possible for the least amount of cost or the first two monsters that they play assuming that they could make an sp with those two monsters that's when you want to vados them so, Hero, pop the Vados, place Field Spell, uh, Vados is going to board wipe, and here's something really interesting, right? Full Armored Exceed actually protects Dark Knight Lancer because the Equip Monster has the effect of, um, if the Equip Monster would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, destroy this card instead, so only the Banshee gets destroyed. So we get to keep our Dark Knight Lancer. It's not going to do much for us in terms of, like, actually continuously removing cards from field because you need to equip cards to monsters which this deck just doesn't do but it is a, a body that that we get to keep and something that can potentially go up into a zeus or a typhon assuming that they get to keep playing whatever it is and secondly amblo whale was just destroyed so we get to summon out pin knight early and we still have princess in graveyard which means we do still have another interruption so we got three interruptions here right so we got dark knight lancer 
Swallow. We got Beidos board wipe, and then we have another princess pop to destroy any special summoned monster that our opponent tries to make, and then to bring back our own princess, which will give us not just princess as a body, but also pretty good follow-up. As you're gonna see, which I, I had to simulate this myself because I didn't give the opponent enough cards to play through this. Funny thing, you can also trigger princess when you summon Beidos to their field. And it doesn't matter if you Ashen for Eternity, both the Vados and the and your fire monsters still get destroyed. Yeah, Blow Whale can trigger. Because if a monster on field is destroyed, you can banish it to pop a card on field. If a link monster is destroyed, I mean. So if you don't want to use it for follow-up, you could banish it to pop something if you feel like that's imperative. If you don't think the popping is relevant, you can keep it engraved to, to revive off of Princess. And yeah, Midnight Early can come back every turn. Uh, you can use Princess from our Link Summons if you want to play Second Amblo Whale, or if you are spicy enough to afford a Raging Phoenix, you definitely can. But that's basically the combo. I wasn't supposed to waste my Ashen for Eternity during my turn, right? But that's that was just to show you that you know Midnight Early can come back. Basically, it's a really interesting concept, and I think as time goes on, the theory will evolve with this deck. I also think Wee Witch Apprentice is another good consideration because it gets it lets you add back your dark monsters from graveyard if it's destroyed by card effect, and all your ashen monsters are dark at the moment, right? They're not fire, so being able to recycle them with something that isn't a trap could actually do you pretty well if you have like the extra bodies to make Wee Witch Apprentice and you don't have like the, the steam to go into like Princess. I think Wee Witch Apprentice is also a great one because giving yourself access to the full engine again, like adding back Priestess would, or adding back King would actually do you really well in like rebuilding the board. On top of like Pit Knight Philly, Philly also comes back during the standby phase of the next turn. In case you feel like playing both, it is a fire cyber slink and it lets a monster with 1500 or less attack twice. Basically itself, it can attack twice and if it happens to battle a monster, it can do double damage which can pair really well with uh, Ashen for Eternity if you lower them down to like zero or, or something, like multiple monsters down to zero. You can inflict up to 6k with Pit Knight Philly attacking two monsters with zero attack, so that's cool. In case that's how you want to play, you can like OTK the opponent that way. Ferocious Flame Swordsman doesn't work. Like, I know Fire King and Fire Decks are playing this right now, but... You know, I guess for Ashen, We Witch's Apprentice would be more appropriate. And that's also why we have the double Amblo Whale here in case we want to make a second one, go into Zeolantis or do whatever it is we want to do. We have Axis Code here just in case. And we have the full armor package. And then we have the Super Heavy, pa uh, the Baron package here because Super Heavy is always able to make Baron in case you already open Priestess plus Field Spell. You have access to Baron here, which, you know, is perfectly fine. You don't need to put Typhon here, I just like Typhon as an idea, but maybe if you feel like you need more copies of some of these smaller cards in the engine, maybe if you want to put in like a IP or something, maybe if you think Hita isn't worth playing because you don't make it up fire monsters, you could definitely do that. It's really personal preference. I also saw someone try to recommend me Earthbound, and uh, I'm sorry to say, I just don't think Earthbound is cooking at the moment because Earthbound has its own number of problems and i really try to make it work right so the main issue with mixing ashen with other decks is that if you try to start with awakening of vados you're locked into pyro for the rest of the turn and i'm like okay well there are definitely pyro synchros out there that we can use but are there pyro fusions that we can use and the answer is no because for us to make gaia prominence we need to have a gaia blaze plus a face-up monster you control, right? Now, we can make Gaia Blaze. Like, Gaia Blaze is more than possible using our engine, right? If you somehow get access to, like, a Line Walker, if you one-for-one one plus Priestess, right? So, Gaia Blaze is more than possible with our engine. But the issue is, is that if you use something like Harmonic Synchro Fusion, there is no higher, there is no higher Pyro Synchro than level 7. The, the highest level Pyro Synchro is level 7, and I can't tell you how frustrating it is to, like, not be able to make a card like Gaia Prominence because this thing's level is too high. And Gaia Prominence would be a great fusion to summon because it can negate monster effects in hand. It can basically negate hand traps like Nib and Ash and Droll. Um, by discarding a card so 
it would have been the perfect um, fusion for the deck to work with, but unfortunately, I don't think Earthbounds can do what the engine wants it to do. I do like that Groundkeeper would essentially also protect you from the Vados board wipe because while you control the field spell, Earthbounds cannot be destroyed by Battle by card effects. So if you get something like Geo Griffin, you know, like right before they board wipe you, you can chain Geo Griffin, summon back, uh, or right before you board wipe with Vados, you can chain Geo Griffin, summon back Groundkeeper, and boom, you know, just clear the board. And then since you will have the Ashen field spell, you can protect all your Earthbound monsters. Heroes still going to go away, but at least your Earthbound monsters are going to be protected. And if you go into something like Geo Gremlin, you could potentially fusion summon up to a Kraken to, to add back a field spell. But unfortunately, Kraken's a little too slow to make during your turn. Oftentimes, you may have to wait until the opponent's turn unless you open like Earthbound Fusion or Super Poly. And that's kind of the sad part. Harmonic Synchro Fusion could go into something like Starving Venom, right? Like if you open Priestess plus like uh, Groundkeeper plus like Line Walker, you can make like Starving Venom plus like a level 7 Synchro. Um, the links may not be as likely, like, the locking yourself into the fusion and synchro stuff is, like, the biggest reason why I can't recommend this stuff, because I do feel like the link package is a lot stronger with Ashen, just because it just works better, or it just be just because it has, like, a higher ceiling, I think. But, I mean, shit, you can make Baron with Hero and uh, Line Walker, I guess, right? And that's another thing, is, like, if you go into the super heavy package or the synchro side of things, you're going to have like a set of pendulum scale and hero can be pendulum summoned. So can priestess hero and priestess can be pendulum summoned. Uh, so that way you don't have to use your normal. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I tried to make both builds work. I just couldn't find a proper combo for the earthbound stuff so I can really show it off. But yeah, I, I do think bonfire is pretty strong in both builds. If you can't afford bonfire, small world's a lot more viable in the earthbound version of things because they're all dark monsters. So I'm sure you can, you know, find a way to make that work. But uh, yeah, bonfire is also pretty, pretty big in this one as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys have any, any other interesting ways to play around the, the Vados board wipe? Let me know. And why is this thing still like touching $20? I thought this deck wasn't that good. <laughs> Or maybe people are on the copium about Vados or about the Ashen deck getting that second wave of support. That'll be all for now. This has been your boy Nisha here, signing out.